Today I'm going to talk about sex, gender, transgender. Now I need to make a few disclaimers before I talk about this. First of all, uh, this is a really, really touchy, controversial subject. So if you get triggered easily from this, uh, maybe this isn't the conversation from you. I do think this is a really important conversation for people to have. There are so many misunderstandings and even just miscommunications. When I see people actually attempting to communicate with each other about sex and gender, I sometimes they're just not even talking to each other. So I'm gonna try to clear up some of the misunderstandings uh, when it comes to sex and gender, explain what the possible differences there are, uh, and I'm gonna explain exactly what does the idea of transgender suggest, uh, and I'm gonna explain to you what my opinions are about them in the end. So first, I'm just gonna explain, in my opinion, what is the difference between the word sex and the word gender. Now, sex refers to male and female. Uh, that is a biological, a scientific term, which in the case of human beings, for sure, uh, refers to the chromosomes uh, of the genetics that a person has. Uh, females have XX chromosomes and males have XY chromosomes. Uh, and it's actually very dry. Uh, sort of when it comes to the scientific definition. Uh, for example, if you would have someone with XX chromosomes, but they are very similar to an average man, they're very manly, uh, they might even have certain parts of their bodies which more resemble a male than a female. But at the end of the day, if their chromosomes are XX, they fit into the category of a scientific female, and someone whose chromosomes are XY uh, is scientifically a male. Now, gender... Uh, traditionally throughout the years has followed uh, sex. Let me ex explain what I think the difference is between sex and gender. Uh, gender is the expectations that we put on the sexes in order to act in a certain way. For example, we expect a male, someone with an XY, uh, to act manly. Uh, we expect them to be, I'll just give some random examples. I know these are stereotypes, but that's the point. That's what gender is. We expect them to act like a man, to be tough, uh, to be a provider, to be a leader. And you know, every single society really has a different set of expectations that they put on males, a different idea of what it is to be a man. And the same thing applies then to women. To a female, we expect them to act ladylike, like a woman. And it would just whatever the stereotypes and whatever the expectations each society has is going to be placing uh, on females, that was going to be what, a, what being a gender, the gender of a woman is. And I, I try to really be careful when I'm... Uh, talking about sex and gender, to use male and female when I'm talking about the sex, the biology, since those are actual real scientific terms. Uh, and when I'm talking about gender, I talk about a man and a woman because there's no such thing scientifically of someone being a man. That's a concept. People describe gender as being a social construct, which I agree to to, uh, to an extent because at the end of the day, Again, every society has a different idea of what it is to be a man, what it is to be a woman. Uh, sometimes you'll even have, you know, in a lot of societies, you'll have men who are the leaders. In some societies, you'll find that women are the leaders. So uh, the ideas, again, of gender are very subjective, and I, I do believe that they are socially constructed. On the other hand, they do come somewhat from biology. Like the fact that, let's say, in the Western world that men are... Uh, the sort of expectation of men is to be less emotional, to be a little more stoic, a little more strong, a little more tough. So I, I really think there is something biological there as well as the social aspect because on average, let's assume that the average temperament of a male is to be a little bit more stoic, a little less emotional, a little more tough on average fitting those stereotypes a little more than the average female would. Now, it, that again does not come to say that there's no exceptions to the rules. You can definitely have a female, someone with an XX chromosome, who is a lot tougher and a lot more resilient and a lot more stoic and a lot more manly, so to speak, uh, than a lot of males are and vice versa. You'll have a lot of males who are very feminine and very, you know, having that sort of temperament that their temperament is actually much more similar to the average 
female than a lot of females are. So the idea is, is that there are these uh, spectrums. You sort of have the average idea of what a man is, and then you have uh, variants. You have people who are extremely masculine and extremely, uh, on the other side, you have males who are extremely feminine, and then for females, the same thing. You'll have more masculine and more feminine men, depending on uh, the time and the place. So one thing that is a more of a modern phenomenon is people suggesting that there should be an idea of being transgender, uh, which means uh, you have someone, let's say, who's a male, who their gender, they're going to identify as a woman. So there are a lot of there's a lot of different ways of people expressing it. I'm not gonna say one thing right now that represents the entire transgender idea in that community. I, that's impossible for me to do. I'm sort of gonna describe which parts of it I do accept and which parts of it I will not accept. And I'll start with what I do accept first. Uh, and that is if a person who, let's say, is a male and says, I feel that my temperament fits better with society's expectations that they place on females, that they consider to be a woman, and therefore I would like to express myself as a woman in order that society should hopefully uh, go along. Instead of giving all these expectations of me to act like a man and to act, let's say, in America, to act someone who's tough and someone who's a provider and all the, all the male stereotypes, I would like them to treat me more like a woman because I feel like my temperament is towards the end of the spectrum uh, of, of males, and I really fit more with the expectations of what would be expected of an average woman, not of an average man. And honestly, when I hear that, I completely accept that, uh, because again, not every single male is going to fit in with the exact average idea of what being a, a, a man is. In fact, I think if we're just looking at every single person who is a male, uh, who has male appendages, who has the XY chromosome and expect them to everyone to act in one very specific way. It's such a closed-minded way of thinking because every single person is different. Every single person uh, was raised in a different home. Every person has a different natural temperament. And for us as a society to, again, expect everyone to act in one very specific way, I think is ridiculous. Uh, same thing would go, again, for a male, same thing would go for a female. If a female could definitely feel that they uh, work a lot better with the expectations that society places on a man. And therefore, that's the reason why they're expressing that, that they would like to identify and they would like to be treated by others. Uh, that's the point of an expression, be treated by others, uh, by their preferred gender, uh, not by the one which is sort of assigned to them traditionally by birth, that a female is a woman and a male is a man. So that is the part that I really accept. I honestly, in, in myself, in terms of being an open-minded and intellectual person, I would much rather accept every single person for who they are and be so open-minded to the point that there wouldn't even be a necessity for this transgender, for the expression of being the opposite gender in the first place. Because really what you're doing when you're transgender, you are expressing to the world, you know, please take me out of this very narrow-minded man box and put me into this other really narrow-minded woman box. Why are the boxes so narrow-minded? Like, why can't we just take every single person for exactly who they are. And if you would have a male who doesn't feel like they fit the average idea of society, of what a man is, that's okay. Society should, if people are really being intellectually honest, should be able to accept a male, a man, for just whoever they are. They shouldn't need to fit into a box in the first place. I really feel like it's not very intellectually honest you know, ideas of society that cause this necessity to try to fit a very specific label. Labels really narrow a person to one specific thing. Why can't people just be whatever the heck they want to be? In my way of thinking, if you would have a male who their temperament is very similar to that of an average female, for example, there wouldn't be a necessity for them to express themselves, I am a woman. They would just say, I am a man. But a man just means a much broader set of expectations. It wouldn't be necessary 
uh, to sort of flip it to the other side. Or there doesn't have to be gender at all. I mean, you can really just, the person's a male, I guess, for medical applications. Uh, that would still be relevant that, you know, that they're a male when you go to a doctor. That that's a important piece of information for a doctor to know. Again, I know society is not exactly there yet, but if I were to be pushing and educating people in the direction, it would be accepting people for who they are and not having to fit people into boxes in the first place. I'll tell you the part about being transgender uh, that I do not accept, and that is when some people claim that because they are transgender, that their biological sex actually follows what they decide it is going to be. So you'll have someone who is a male scientifically, let's say has an XY chromosome, and they say, I am now actually a female. Uh, I fit the scientific definition of a female right now. And that's the part which I do not accept because we do not have the technology nowadays to change a person's chromosomes from male to female or from female to male. And I really think this is a huge detriment to the sort of education of what gender is and what theoretically being transgender is. The fact that people really start confusing sex and biology with the discussion of gender and what the expectations of society are uh, are placing upon people. Some people, they'll go and they'll challenge the scientific definition and they'll say, well, maybe male and female on a scientific level should not be determined by the chromosomes, by the XX and the XY. Uh, maybe it should be determined by other things. And uh, I've even seen some studies uh, that suggest, I have not verified them and gone into all the research, but I've seen some studies that suggest that if you take people who are transgender uh, and you actually look at their brain structure, very often you'll find that their brain actually looks more similar to that of the opposite sex than their own. You know, males and females on average have different amounts of gray matter and different amounts of density in their brains, etc. Uh, and I, I don't think that this is an illegitimate claim at all. Obviously, it would need to be uh, proven scientifically. I think it's very likely that you can have a male that their brain actually does closer resemble that of an average female. And I could even imagine that therefore that makes an effect on their temperament and that in turn makes that person in their life identify as a woman, want to feel that they, that society is going to expect them uh, to be a woman. So I, I really accept all of that uh, until the point where you want to start changing the scientific definition of what a male and what a female is. Because at the end of the day, I mean the vast, vast majority of statistics, unless there are some very, very rare genetic anomalies. There are very clear correlations between what happens when a person is a male, has an XY chromosome, and an XX female chromosomes. Uh, for example, genitals, they very, very strongly correlate between having a male set of genitals and having XY chromosomes and a female set of genitals with an XX chromosomes. Every, every once in a while you'll find an exception and every once in a while you'll find someone who doesn't have exactly XX or XY. There's such thing as some genetic anomalies where they actually fit neither of those but again those are very very rare but in the vast vast majority of cases those who have the male chromosomes have very clear male characteristics and the female chromosomes physically at least have very clear female characteristics and so I am very reluctant for us to start looking at brain matter and density and things that are a lot less identifiable uh, than the classic scientific definition and to be, you know, ch why change the idea of male and female uh, it, it, from such a clear way of, of such a strong correlation between chromosomes and what manifests physically in a person's body? Uh, why change that in order to suit some people, uh, you know, that their brain is a little bit more similar and therefore they would like to be defined as the opposite sex. I, I really just do not accept that at this point. Just trying to change science in order to suit people's sort of feelings. One thing which unfortunately happens a lot is that a lot of people who are transgender 
have a different condition which is called gender dysphoria or genital dysphoria or sex dysphoria. Uh, they all are very similar things uh, in the fact that a person looks at their body and is dissatisfied by it. It doesn't feel right. Let's say if you have, let's say, a male, their male genitals on them when they see it, it just doesn't feel right to them. When they dream, I've even heard from transgender people that in their dreams, they are the opposite sex. So that is actually a mental uh, condition and that is something which uh, people should be tr seeking treatment for. I honestly think that it's because of genital dysphoria that people very often, instead of expressing themselves as the opposite gender, if I'm a male, treat me like a woman. Instead, people are saying I am actually a genetic female because they have sort of this dysphoria. Their brain and their body uh, are not aligned in that way. Uh, and again, that is a mental illness. Unfortunately, I think that persuades people to try to change the scientific definitions and that it should just only follow, you know, scientific sex should only follow what is in a person's brain. But uh, obviously, that is a, a very non-scientific attitude, in my opinion. There's some people who have this idea that there should be many genders. So it's not just a man and a woman. There should be a large spectrum of um, sort of expectations. Again, if we're talking about gender as being the expectations of society put on people or way people express their sex, their gender, uh, so that there should actually be many genders. So there's a part of that that I agree with because I really don't believe in putting people into very specific boxes. You can have two males and one of them uh, is a very, very stoic and very non-emotional and really keeps everything in. Or you can find someone like me, which I realize I'm much more uh, to the opposite extreme. Uh, in terms of the way I'm emotional and expressive and bubbly, I, I definitely realize that I'm, again, I think this is a legitimate way of being a male, but it's a little bit extreme. I'm to one end. So I, I definitely agree that we shouldn't be picking just two boxes. There's a man and a woman and fitting people into that. But I don't see the necessity of creating more boxes. I think there should be fewer boxes. As I mentioned before, I think that the idea of being a man should be, you know, the expectations we put on a male should be very, very broad, so broad that it actually encompasses everyone, theoretically. Uh, and any man could fit into that definition what it is to be a man and the same thing. Uh, for a woman. So I, I disagree with the idea of creating more boxes. It actually just creates more of a problem. Uh, and then if you have a new person who doesn't feel like they fit into any boxes, then you'll create another box. It's just creating a lot of uh, unfortunate, you know, miscommunications, really poor communication, I think, if you're trying to, you know, create a, a brand new gender and many, many genders and say, I'm exactly this thing. You're not exactly that thing. No one's exactly anything. You know, I mean, if you have two people who identify as the same gender, they're not exactly the same. So why instead of doing that, which is a pretty unintelligent way of doing that, fitting people into more boxes, just make your current boxes so broad that they actually encompensate everyone. I don't think there's any problem. You know, some people have a problem with things being heteronormative or, you know, presuming that the average male is going to have this type of temperament and the average female have a different type of temperament. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. That's just simple statistics, but that needs to be accompanied with the open-mindedness uh, that a lot of people are missing that it, despite the fact that there's an average temperament for a male, there's a lot of deviation. A lot of people are different, the same thing for the average temperament of a female. So what about pronouns? So uh, I feel like pronouns is really just an extension uh, of gender because really, if you think about it, there is nothing necessitating, let's say in the English language, that we refer to a male and to a female by different pronouns. There's nothing that necessarily we have to say he or she. It could have all been the same word. So again, this was something uh, which has evolved uh, through society over time. The language is really just a product of the ideas of society that the average male and the average female are different, that there is an idea of being a man and there's an idea of being a woman. And once it's become so binary, especially when it's come to mating, uh, in order to mate and have children, there needs to be a male and a female biologically. That's actually one of the strongest ideas of where the biology really takes place. A female and a female cannot have an offspring. The same thing with a male.
male and a male. So uh, since that's been the case, so therefore marriage has become a social construct and all kinds of just ideas of how we look differently at a man and a woman. And that's, you know, the language sort of followed the ideas of society after that, that we started referring to a man as he and a woman as she, but it's not necessary. I totally understand when a person feels like they want to be taken out of one box of let's say being a man and they say I, I would like people to treat me like a woman so included in that uh, would be they would like to be referred by the woman pronouns by the she that's sort of just the, the way that they're being referred to the way society is expecting them to act uh, I do think those things go hand in hand so I don't again I don't have a problem with someone who uh, wants to be referred to by different pronouns. I don't think we should be forcing anyone. That was the big topic in Canada with Jordan Peterson. You shouldn't, certainly should not be coercing people through force to be referring to people in a certain way or not. That's definitely uh, part and parcel of freedom of speech. According to my way of thinking, I don't think there's any necessity to even change the language. Like you can have just he be referring to instead of gender, it'll just be referring to a male and she would just be referring to a female. Those, that's really was the determining factor of when that part of the language um, was created. I could understand the argument of getting rid of he and she in general and just making everyone referred to by the same pronoun. Maybe eventually our language will develop in that way. That sort of has to, hap has to happen organically. I don't think we're gonna uh, force everyone <laughs> to again, uh, get rid of the ideas of he and she. I really think if we were actually open-minded enough as a society that a legitimate male means a lot of different things and same thing with a legitimate female, uh, there wouldn't be a necessity to change the pronouns from he to she or she to he because a he would mean a lot of things including someone who nowadays considers them to be transgender. That would be a actual legitimate he and society would be actually accepting them instead of them uh, not fitting into one box and going to another box which they probably also don't fit into because who really fits exactly into the exact female <laughs> box or the exact male box? Almost nobody. What if using the improper pronouns are you increasing the risk of suicide? That is your freedom of speech infringing on someone's rights to live in it. Well, what if calling someone ugly increases their risk of suicide? So is it illegal to call someone ugly? Let's say calling someone stupid. So now you're not allowed to call anyone stupid. I, I do think that if a person, if calling someone by a thing increases their rate of committing suicide, that the, the, the idea is not to coerce everyone to stop saying that. That person needs treatment. It's the same way if you would have a big wound in your arm and you walk through the subway and you say, nobody come, come near me. If you come near me, you're gonna aggravate my wound. I have this big gaping wound in my arm. So obviously that person's being very unreasonable. You gotta get yourself to a hospital. You cannot be walking through public in a place where you're so vulnerable. Uh, and, and, and be expecting everybody to accommodate you. And I would expect the same thing is really about pro, uh, you know, gender pronouns. If people have these great expectations of society, everyone needs to start talking different in order to accommodate their mental illness. Uh, they need to seek treatment. You don't force the entire society to accommodate them. If people want to accommodate them. Again, if I have, I'm in contact with plenty of transgender people who definitely are specific which pronouns they would like to be referred to, and I oblige. You know, what I mean, I'll call them by the pro. That's just basic courtesy. But you should never be able to coerce someone to do that. How far do you think society is from the point of ignoring genders altogether? I mean, I, again, I don't think that we should be ignoring genders altogether. I think under acknowledging the fact that the average male is different in their temperament than the average female is fine, as long as that comes with the open-mindedness that there's going to be a lot of exceptions. There are sometimes actual useful things for differentiating between the, between genders, between an average, like, it, it, you might be wondering, like, if there is so much open-mindedness necessary and we should really accept everyone uh, for whatever exceptions they are, wherever they are on the male spectrum, wherever they are on the female spectrum, so why even have gender at all? Like, what is the average male temperament 
and the average female temperament. Like what kind of information is that giving you? And I honestly think that there's nothing wrong with using that information in a statistical sense. Let me give you an example. If you're walking down a street and it's a very, very quiet street, it's very, very dark, you're in an isolated place, and you see someone who, as, as far as you can tell, is a male coming in your direction, I think it warrants a certain greater amount of fear than if you would determine the person is coming who is a female because on average males do have a temperament on average which make them commit more violence uh, than females do that's something evolutionary uh, males have always been the hunters they've always been the fighters this is just something that uh, the males who have this sort of more go get them aggressive fighting physically fighting uh, attitude have survived and passed their genes to the next generation more often than those who haven't. I don't think that, you know, if a person wants to use all the information at their disposal when it comes to surviving, when it comes to getting along the world and being more careful, let's say, from males in that way, if there's a certain way that females are more dangerous than being careful from them in that way. I don't think there's anything wrong with using that information, but that's only when you're in survival mode and you're afraid. Uh, but once you're dealing with a person in a social way and the person's expressing themselves to you, you know, to start putting them down because they don't fit into the exact average idea of what a male or a female is, I think that's ridiculous. I think it's a really dumb uh, way to treat people.